Hi everyone, welcome to lesson number five. Um, and today we're going to talk about a really specific example of a digit identifying neural network, which is to say that so far I've been kind of making um, slightly general statements about neural networks. And as we go, we're going to be getting more and more specific. And so this is a big step forward today um, on our path from speaking generally about neural networks to talking about just one specific example. And um, what we want is a neural network that can take as an input a grayscale image of a handwritten digit with image size 28 by 28 pixels like this. So this would be like the input to my neural network. And you and I can both see that this is a handwritten six. That's like, you know, very easy for us to identify, I think. Um, but, you know, what we're going to do is basically teach the computer how to identify this uh, image as the number six. And so what my output is going to be is, uh, you know, the computer telling us, yeah, that's a six. That's what we hope to get. Now, um, if we want to speak practically, the, then the input to the network isn't, you know, strictly going to be this image per se. Um, what it is, when you store this image in computer memory, is we're talking about a vector, where remember a vector is just a list of numbers, where there's 784 numbers in my list, and each of these numbers is going to be an entry between uh, 0 and 1. And for us, uh, 0 represents a black pixel with no light coming out of the screen, and then 1 is going to represent a white pixel, or the maximum light coming out of the each, you know, each pixel on the screen. And so this is the same handwritten six as we have up, up, up here, but I've just blown it up to show you that I'm going to number these pixels from left to right, uh, just like you would read. So the first row is going to have pixels number 1 through 28, and then the second row starts with pixel number 29, and so on. And numbering these pixels like this, now you can see that there's 784 pixels, which makes sense because that should be 28 times 28. And so basically, just assign each pixel a spot on your list, and then for each spot in that list of numbers, or in other words, each entry in that vector, uh, we're going to give the value of that entry just a number corresponding to its brightness. So it'll be 0 if the pixel's black, and it'll be 1 if the pixel's white. So that's what it would look like here. Notice on all of these black pixels, I've you know written the number 0 there, and where it's brighter, I've got the number like 0 0.7, for example, for that pixel. And then where it's like very, very bright, um, you know, the brightest kind of light in this image, I have the number 1. So this is, the, again, the same handwritten 6, but these would be the values of the entries in that vector. These would be the numbers in your list of numbers when we're talking about the input vector to the neural network. And so this is just trying to teach you, you know, Whenever you're teaching a computer how to recognize digits, uh, you have to sort of chop it up and feed it to the computer as a list of numbers, because computers can do math. Um, you know, it's, it's not the same as our brains, where we can just look at an image and intuit it as being a six, but instead you have to first process the image as a list of numbers, and then the computer can do something with this. Um, so what we were going to have is a, net, is a network where the output is going to come from the output layer neurons, you know, on, on the layer on the far right. And there's going to be 10 output layer neurons. And those output layer neurons are going to represent the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And, you know, you're going to have some inner layer neurons. And then, of course, you'll have 784 input layer neurons. So 784 is too many neurons to draw here. Draw some synapses connecting up my network. You know, obviously all the neurons in layer one are going to be connected to all the neurons in layer two. Uh, that would be a real, real pain in the butt to draw. Um, so I'm just going to draw, you know, a few here, a few of these connections. And uh, 
you can fill in the rest with your brain. But basically what we're, we have is this neural network um, where I have 10 output layer neurons. And then the, whatever the values of that these output layer neurons take on when we do the calculation, whatever the output um, value of one of these output neuro neurons is, if that neuron has the highest value, so let's say this one has value 0.1, that one has value 0, that one has value 0.2, that one has value 0.1, that one has value 0.9, that one has value 0.3, 2.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0. Well, then the neuron with the highest output value is the one associated with my digit 4. And so then we'll say that this, this neural network has identified my input image, which is just a list of numbers, as the number 4. So in the output layer, like I'm talking about these uh, numbers I've written in red, Zero would represent kind of like a low confidence that the given image is an image of the corresponding digit. So the fact that this uh, zero output neuron has value 0 0.1, that tells me that this network doesn't think that the input image was a zero. But uh, a one is going to represent high confidence that the given image is an image of the corresponding digit. So the fact that this is 0 0.9 tells me that the network is pretty confident that it um, is looking at a four in the data that you fed the network. And so what we can do is we can convert the output vector into a prediction of the digit's identity by selecting the output neuron with the largest value. That's what I'm talking about here, again. And just as a little note here for applications, you could imagine like an expanded version of this neural network um, being used by the postal service. Because you know, whenever you mail anything in the mail, you probably hand write your return address, and you hand write the address which you want your mail to be delivered to, and you put a little stamp in the corner. And um, somebody has to look at your handwriting and determine where the heck you want this mail to be sent in order for it to be delivered properly. But the Postal Service gets way too much mail um, every day that it has to sort through for like a human to be looking at this stuff. And so more than likely, the Postal Service has some kind of machine that can identify the address off of a piece of mail, um, even if the address was handwritten by a human, who sometimes have bad handwriting. And so you have to use these kind of neural networks. Um, this one's limited in the fact that it can only identify digits 0 through 9. But you could extend this neural network to also identify the, the letters A through Z, as well as the digits 0 through 9. And then um, you'd really be in business if you, uh, you know, could prepare the numbers correctly, have the computer remember what order they were in, and then also maybe compare the final string with um, a list of known addresses uh, in the country, addresses that are registered with the Postal Service, and then you could get something that, you know, probably sorts most of the mail correctly. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next video.